What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing Destiny 2's story, and also talking about a lot of the improvements that Destiny 2 is supposed to have over Destiny 1. Now this is because of IGN. They have a deal right now with Bungie, and are going to be putting out content pretty much every day for the next few weeks about Destiny 2. Today, they put out an interview with two Bungie developers, Jason Harris, who is the senior narrative lead, and Matthew Ward, who is the cinematic lead. That video will of course be linked in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. But they talked a lot about story and said some very interesting things, and that's what we're going to break down in this video. And so, let's get started. The first thing they talked about is just the fact that you don't have light. Now, this is something we've known for quite a while, but they said specifically that, you know, without the light are you even a guardian right you were the reason you're so special the reason you were this badass guardian mother trucker unless you're playing a hunter is that no, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding is that you were literally invincible right like you couldn't be killed for goodness sakes you die and come right back like, that was just who you were as a guardian. You had these insane powers, smashing the ground and making an electric field go around you. You know, having this gun come out of nowhere and insta-kill anyone. It was insane. And this is all gone in Destiny 2. And the thing that really caught my eye when they were talking about this, or I should say caught my ear, is that they said it's going to be an interesting relationship. That this creates an interesting relationship between guardians and civilians. Because they're not going to be impacted by this not nearly as much as you. If you're a random civilian living in the last city and the traveler gets, you know, taken over and the light gets taken away, you won't even know the light going away per se. But the Guardians are going to be super impacted. So it's going to be interesting to see in Destiny 2 if you have these encounters with civilians or you're fighting side by side with civilians because both of you are kind of going to be in the same boat. And I think that's a pretty cool scenario that, you know, you should look forward to in Destiny 2. Now, the next thing that they talked about is that Destiny 1 was foundational. They literally said this and they said that it was meant to ask questions, but not necessarily answer them. And, uh... Boy, were they right about the second part, about not answering questions, because let me tell you, Destiny 1, it's definitely, it definitely, definitely was worthy of the criticism it got. Um, I started a new character, I got Destiny recently, for the Xbox One, and I've been leveling up my character there uh, in order to get raid ready so I can stream with you guys on the Xbox. So I played the campaign recently, like I played all through the vanilla Destiny campaign, and it doesn't make any sense. Like, you play through that and you kind of remember, wow, I remember why this game was getting trashed so much. The vanilla campaign is just garbage. And so they are really, really going out on a limb to say, we're going to fix this this time. Because although the vanilla Destiny campaign was horrible, the expansions, actually, some of them did a decent job. The Dark Below was okay. The House of Wolves actually had a semi-interesting story. The Taken King had a very interesting story and introduced us to Cade Six as an actual likable character that now everyone absolutely loves. So the Taken King did an, a really good job of telling a story and the Rise of Iron didn't do a bad job. It didn't do a good job, but it didn't do a bad job. So it's not just like we're looking at the story being told as just Vanilla Destiny, but we've had four different expansions all telling other stories, all building the world. But interestingly, only Vanilla Destiny was focusing on the Traveler. And during this interview, they said, you know, one of the most interesting parts about Destiny 2 is that we're actually again focusing on the Traveler. The actual Traveler, this big mythical floating ball that we heard about at the very beginning of Destiny, but none of the expansions expanded upon. Can't believe I said that, but it fits. But they really didn't. You know, the Traveler was not discussed in any of those expansion narratives, and finally we're gonna get to learn more about it in Destiny 2. Even, you know, in one of the main places you go with the European Dead Zone, there's a shard of the Traveler sitting there and glowing, and so hopefully we're gonna learn a lot more about what the heck the Traveler actually is and what it does and so on. 
Now, another really cool quote from this interview is that, and this is a direct quote here, this studio spent a lot of time world building, and I can't emphasize that enough. And Jason Harris then went on to say, and that means we're now ready to tell stories. And I thought that quote was, again, just so interesting because it's really putting in perspective what's going on in Destiny 2. Destiny 1 did a lot of groundwork. Yes, the story was horrible, and especially the vanilla story, but it did do a very good job of setting this world up. Who are your different enemies? We know a little bit about the Vex, a little bit about the Fallen, a little bit about the Hive, well, more than a little bit about the Hive specifically, a little bit about the Cabal. We know about the different rituals and different activities, like the background of the Iron Banner. We know a little bit about Osiris and the background of Charles of Osiris and all of that stuff. We know the world, right? We they did They did do a good job of building the world. And now in Destiny 2, we can take that knowledge as Guardians that we learned in Destiny 1 and then just tell stories within that world and have adventures within that world. Because if you just have the adventures without establishing what the heck is going on, it just doesn't make sense. Without the Rise of Iron expansion laying the groundwork for the Iron Banner, if you meet up with, let's say, Lady Ephrodite in Destiny 2, that would have no meaning. But now you're going to be like, oh, shiz, it's Lady Ephrodite. Let's, let's kick some cabal ass, right? You're going to be motivated because you have the background of the world supporting that encounter. Now, they also emphasize that Destiny 2 will have a ton of story channels. And I guess that refers to just all of the different activities that you can do to tell stories. Strikes are going to tell somewhat of a story, as well, I suppose, story missions, as well, the new adventures, as well, lost sectors. There's going to be a bunch of different activities that you can do in Destiny 2 that we already know about, each one of them having a degree of storytelling. Like, just even a strike will tell some degree of a story. And also, they said that there's going to be a ton of ways to see the story infused without the game. It's not just going to be told to you when you're doing a story mission, but rather, you know, finding these scannable objects in Destiny 2. We've already heard that there's more scannable objects in Destiny 2 than the whole of Destiny 1 by far. Finding recording tapes. We got a recent example of uh, doing a mission on Nessus where you're collecting these tapes of the explorers that crash landed on Nessus and hearing their stories and getting the narrative that way. And that's very interesting as well. But they also said, and this is moving on to the end of the interview, that they really did look at the feedback they got about Destiny 1 and are applying it. So even though the fanboys really didn't like people criticizing Destiny and got really salty at people getting salty about Destiny, thank goodness there is a such a thing as constructive criticism. And Bungie did look at the complaints of people like me and other people and said, okay, this is what they're saying we're doing wrong. Let's do it right in Destiny 2. And you know what? I think this is a good thing. Like, I know a lot of people watching this video are going to, in the comment section, still dump on Destiny's story and say, oh, sure, the story is going to be better. Yeah, right, it's going to be trash again, just like Destiny. And you know what? They have a right to say that for sure. And it is a, a legitimate point. Destiny 1's story, especially Vanilla, was so bad, you don't have a lot of confidence going into Destiny 2 in some aspects. But I think the fact that Bungie's developers are literally out there saying, yeah, kind of, we know we got it wrong, right? We listened to feedback, we heard your guys' feedback, and we improved that. I would be a lot more concerned if they weren't saying that. If they were kind of pretending that Destiny 1 did, did everything right and that there weren't shortcomings and they're like yeah destiny 2 is just going to be bigger all this stuff so the fact that they're like acknowledging that they messed up i think is a really really good thing and the fact that they're saying yeah we listened to your feedback we heard you that's a really good thing i would be very concerned if they weren't saying stuff like that and at the very end of the interview matthew ward said quote i hope people complain about how much story we have that's the Reddit thread I'd like to read. There's too much damn story. So that again is alluding to, you know, reading Reddit threads of the opposite uh, about Destiny 1 and saying, you know what, we've gone a complete 180. 
I want to read the other Reddit thread. Like, I'm spending way too much time doing story missions and immersed in the story, and I hate it. I just want to shoot stuff. So that was, I thought, a pretty funny way to end the interview. And again, it kind of shows, like I was saying before, that they do listen to our complaints, that they're aware of Destiny 1's shortcoming, and they're really trying to fix it. They're going out of their way and saying, we want to read a different Reddit thread, one about too much story rather than one about too little. So again, I think that's very good. It gif gives me hope. It gives me hope for Destiny 2. If you can have an immersive story in Destiny 2, and that is going to be a huge selling point. And I think that that's going to really move the franchise forward because, like we discussed earlier in the video, Destiny 1 did do a fairly good job of building this world. And there's so much, there's so much that I'd like to learn more about. The War Mines. I love to learn more about the War Mines, learn more about Osiris, learn more about the Nine. All of these cool things that you're wondering about, that you're confused about, and you want to know more about Destiny 2. As they said, this is their chance to go and tell those stories. They're done building the world, it's now time to explore that world. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found this interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you want to see more Destiny 2 content, be sure to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.